So, how will we live in the first space city? From the very beginning of our history, humankind lives on Earth, but keeps dreaming of more, dreaming of space. Let's imagine the following. Many thousands of years ago, our ancestors, our great-great-grandfathers, gathered around the fire after a successful hunt. They're having fun, laughing and discussing something. And then flashes of light are slowly fading away, taking the sounds of their voices back to silence. And now the primitive people are getting back into their caves, and only one little boy, a very curious kid, stays to watch the stars and to study the endless sky. Many things have changed from that moment. Many stars have been reborn and died again. But one thing remains the same. Human urge to get the knowledge, to know the unknown, to know space. Since the invention of the first means of observation, man has always sought to, uh, to expand himself with the help of space, sought to learn more. All these ancient Greek gods, astrology and first of all the maps helping people to travel. All of this happened not out of the idle curiosity, but was the desire to touch eternity. There is a philosophical movement known as the philosophy of Russian cosmism, and this representative used to say that a person will truly gain immortality only when he finds himself in space. And this idea was the main message in the works of scientists of the 20th century. Tsiolkovsky, Karolyov, Werner von Braun and many others. The Big Bang theory states that not only planets and stars came from space, but our human body also did, at the level of elementary particles in consist of space, of cosmic dust, the ancient one. That is, you and I are parts of a huge universe, and it's literally inside us. And of course, this is exactly what has always forced people to move on and to explore space. So why did I remember the image of that dreamy child in the very beginning? You know, I was lucky to be the dreamy child myself. In my childhood, I used to spend a lot of time with astrophysicists, science fiction writers, who claimed that eventually humanity would live in space. And it all happened thanks to my mother. She was a leading astrophysicist in the USSR and chief designer of the Pulkov Observatory. Once she took me to a real space observation. Unfortunately, my mother is long gone, but when I remember this moment, it is as if she is standing next to me somewhere. And when I walked into that room with a telescope, and I saw that machine, and I walked up to that little eye, and I just looked into it in front of me, I just saw an endless ocean of stars, an endless dance of planets, constellations. It was so impressive that I caught my breath, and it seemed to me that I didn't breathe at least for a couple of minutes, that is how incredible the sight was. That moment, and I would go as far to say this, completely changed my life. That moment influenced all my future activities, my whole destiny. It was at that moment that I felt a passionate, burning, overwhelming desire, not just flying to space myself, not just find myself there, become an astronaut, but to show this space to all people, to all of you like it's here, very close, and to give people the opportunity to be there at some point. Later in my life, there was a lot. Social activity, different projects, but I always had this space dream, this cosmic visionary. It was deep inside. And of course, at some point, I came to it. When at the beginning of the 20th century the Wright brothers said that a person would be able to fly from one continent to another by plane, everybody thought they were just crazy. But only 60 years ago the first man made a spacewalk and the projects of the first space cities began to appear. For example, O'Neill cylinders, Stanford Taurus and many others. 
What my team and I are doing now is a continuation of those initiatives and those projects, and I'm not afraid of this word, a real revolution. We have created the International Open Platform Galactica and are building the first city in space. Here it is, on the slide. The city of fear will be the first and the key project to bring people together for the sake of a common goal, a common idea, and will bring people to a completely new level of a mental, spiritual, physical and technological development. You can ask me, look, why do we need these space cities at all? Earth's life seems to be quite okay, the aliens haven't arrived yet, thank God. There is no nuclear war, and in general, it's nice to lay on a sofa at home watching TV or different shows. Why do we need all these dreams, space and cities and so on? But you know, if you don't notice things, it doesn't mean they don't exist. Environmental problems, overpopulation, hunger, and of course, we are being stuck in social networks, in the virtual reality. Which, if we don't change anything, at some point will inevitably lead to the death of humankind, the death of our planet, and simply our extinction as a species. Let us talk about what space technologies have already appeared in our life. Tell me, did some of you fried eggs using a pan this morning? Great, the Teflon coating you used to fry your eggs is a real space technology. As well as instant porridge, solar panels, water purification technologies, which, by the way, are already used in Africa to save the unfortunate 2.5 million people who die from lack of clean water every year. All of these technologies got their first application in space. They started there just to try them out, and then they entered our homes. And these are just a few examples out of many others available. The space city is fundamentally different from any other space-related project. Our goal is not just to make some cool technological innovation, to spend a lot of money, no. First, this is a public or community project. It doesn't belong to me or to any company, to any country. It belongs to all humankind, to all people. The second goal is to create a comfortable living environment for people in space. Why do I say comfortable and why do I place such emphasis on it? You know, I personally don't like how it is shown, for example, in American films or TV shows about some people. A poor country, someone surviving on Mars in this plastic tent, someone must die or something eats him. No, this is a dead end. Thus, we will not fly anywhere, we will not develop anything. This is a dead end first for all humankind. And it's very important, as we are social creatures. It is important for us to communicate, to visit the cinema, theatre, some restaurants, and all this is important to be available in space. Now every person has the opportunity to buy a ticket to Moscow and fly there. Space tickets must have the same level of availability to the public, and this can be achieved by our joint efforts. The second focus area we are also actively working at is the creation of artificial gravity. Many studies show that uh, what, uh, when a person is in zero gravity and in fact floats in space, his body is affected negatively with a loss up to 70% of muscle mass and up to 40% of bone tissue. Therefore, it's very important to create artificial gravity so that a person could work and move safely in this city. In addition, we are exploring technologies allowing new energy sources, solar energy, in the first place. After all, these methods can offer a way out of a difficult situation for our de-energized areas on Earth. Let's also take, for example, molecular food technology, which can in just help people in, on Earth here and now. 
Humankind has always thought about how important it is to explore space, how unique it will be, what future it promises us. And there is no doubt that our next step, our next development is in space. The technical parameters of the project are as follows. The city will be designed for 10,000 people. Of course, I am talking about the final stage of the city. The gradual development of the project goes from the first demo base for 10 people, then 400,000, and in the end it will reach the capacity of, of 10,000. This is a self-replicating structure, which means most of it will be built in space with the use of 3D printers. The diameter of the wheel, the torus, is 2 kilometers, and the habitable area is 200 hectares. For comparison, it's approximately 210 football fields. The city will have all the conditions to grow plants and raise animals, which means in the future it will develop into a fully autonomous system. And while this project is being prepared, we are now building a space center as an educational project on Earth in order to show everyone the space opportunities, to show everyone their potential. The city of here will become the starting point for further space research and development. And of course, many new professions will appear. For example, space biologist and engineer for industrial facilities in space. These are people who will build bases on other planets and the cinema uh, autonomous cities in the future. Such professions as 3D printing space specialists will appear, together with IT specialists, space psychologists and many other space scientists. And of course, the city of fear will boost dramatically the development and emergence of new technologies on the planet Earth. The execution period of the project is 30-50 years, not 100, not 200 years, and yes, it is achievable already in our lines, provided our common involvement in the project. This means that our children will be able to take cool selfies in the first space city. Think for a moment. What kind of world do we want to live in, in the future? In the developing one that strives forward, where each person has opportunities for the development, where there are opportunities for the development of our true potential as a human species, as a human being. Or in the world where our careless attitude, negligence, lack of attention and sometimes just poorish attitude in the first place towards ourselves and towards nature is simply destroying our planet. And many scientists say that our planet's Earth has changed and it will never be the place it was before. And it means that we need to adapt to new conditions that we need to move, to move further, to move to the stars. Which way to choose is up to you. Thank you.